Fairness is where we get into trouble. Fairness ended in the Garden of Eden. Parents of young kids, we know this, right? We tell this to our kids all the time. Life isn't fair. And here's why fairness is a problem. Because fairness means even. But nothing in life is fair or even. Paul presents a third way to go the extra mile. A third healthy, doable way to go the extra mile. Look at verse 10. Here's where Paul presents this third way. He says, don't become weary, don't give up. Instead, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Now, there's a good chance you're not seeing option three listed there so clearly, so let me just pull it out for you. Paul says, don't give up, don't get weary, but as you have opportunity, will you say that word with me? Opportunity, give help, go the extra mile, do good to those in need. Okay, that word, opportunity, the Greek word for it, kairos, literally means time. Let us not become weary in doing good. Let us not give up. But as we have opportunity, time, let us do good. What does this mean? What's this third option? Well, before I share it, let me just say, I am greatly indebted to a pastor in Atlanta, Andy Stanley, for his leadership teaching on this subject. He's been teaching on this for 20 years. He's made this a mantra in his life and in his church. And it's something I've adopted in my own life for years now. If option one is get weary and option two is give up, then option three, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Let me say it again. Do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Would you read that with me? Can we say it together? Do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Do for, ev do for one not what I can do for everyone, not what I have time to do for everyone, not what I have the opportunity to do for everyone. What Paul is saying here is a third healthier response to the extra mile is that at some point, not for everyone, but as you have time, do for someone. If at any point in your life you could be doing for one what you wish you could do for everyone, it would change the world. Now, let's talk about this, because at first, let's be honest, this seems problematic too, because this is not the way that you were raised. In fact, you were taught to not think this way. Um, when you were a kid at elementary school and it was chocolate chip cookie day and each kid was allowed to have one cookie and you went up to the lunch lady and you said, do you think that I could get another chocolate chip cookie? Do you remember what she would say? If I give you one, I have to give one to everybody. And you would think, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't, just give me one. And I have seen this all throughout my life. It's not just as a kid. Um, I was talking to some of our staff here the other day, one of our staff, and um, one of our departments wanted to use some of their budget money in a way that was against a policy we have. Um, we have kind of an unwritten policy. You gotta use your budget a certain way. But as I heard their reason for wanting to do it, their explanation made sense to me. And it made sense to the person that I was speaking with. And I said, I think we should let them do it. And this person said back to me, well, if we say yes to them, we might as well plan on saying yes to everyone and pretty soon we'll have to just get rid of the policy. And I said, no, we don't. We can just choose to break it whenever we want to, whenever, whenever we think there's a good enough reason or even if we don't have a good reason, we just feel like saying yes to somebody. See, we grew up in a world where we were told if I do it for one, then I have to do it for everyone. No, you don't. You can do for one person what you wish you could do for everyone, what you don't do for anyone else. And in fact, here's the truth. If you don't do that, you will never go the extra mile. You will always find yourself too busy with your own life to go the extra mile. I'm gonna say something, and I know there's a chance somebody here is gonna misquote me. I know it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Don't be fair. Fairness is where we get into trouble. Fairness ended in the Garden of Eden. Um, parents of young kids, we know this, right? We tell this to our kids all the time. Life isn't fair. And here's why fairness is a problem. Because fairness means even. But nothing in life is fair or even. 
We think if I help this neighbor, then I have to help this neighbor. If I agree to watch this single mom's kids, then I have to agree to watch this single mom's kids. If I make this person a meal and bring them dinner, then I have to bring other people in similar situations dinner. If I go visit this person in the hospital, then I need to go see everyone I know every time they go into the hospital. No, you don't. Abandon that way of thinking. Don't be fair. It's more important that you be engaged. And if you try to use evenness, you're going to be forced into one of those two extremes. You're going to try and do everything and burn out, or you're going to do nothing and be fair. Do for one what you wish that you could do for everyone. Now think about that. If that became part of our church culture, guess what everybody here would do? They would do for one. Everyone would be doing for one. How healthy would that be? And see, here's what doing for one allows you to do. Because it's one, you can make a measurable difference in someone's life. When you do for one, you can go deep rather than wide. Let me talk about that for a second. I think sometimes we think God honors wide. And so we get, man, we get caught up with amounts. I'm as guilty at this as anyone. Um, Hey, we housed 28 people. We packed 125,000 meals. Great. We connected 50 couples to each other. Wonderful. And numbers are good. I'm not against numbers. I, I love numbers and doing big things. But sometimes when you go wide, it's hard to see an impact or to measure it. What you can measure is when you go deep. Just as a pastor, I cannot counsel 16 couples. I don't have the time or the opportunity. There's just not space in my schedule. I can't even do that with five couples. Thank God for Sarah, our counseling pastor, who can do far more. But one or two, I can go deep with one or two and hopefully make a lasting difference. And I wonder if that sometimes isn't the reason we get exhausted going the extra mile because we go the extra mile for 20 different people, which by the way, that's 20 extra miles. We go wide and it doesn't seem to do much. It doesn't have much benefit. We don't see a change, but had we gone five miles for one, it would have been less miles for us overall and something that had a really significant impact for the one that we chose to do it for. Let me give you another thing that happens when you do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Another thing we're able to do when we operate this way, we're able to go long-term rather than short-term. See, when you do for one, here's what you're able to say, I'm going to be with you in this until it is resolved. My concern for you does not end when you walk out my door, when we get off the phone, or when I drop a dollar in your box. I'm going to go the extra mile with someone. I'm going to give them more than five minutes when they need help. I'm going to give them five months or five years. I'm gonna give them my cell phone number for when they need help. I can't give five years to everybody, wish I could, but I can do it for one, do it for somebody. As I have the opportunity and time, I'll always be doing for one. Here's the third thing doing for one allows us to do. It allows us to go time and not just money. I was thinking about this, it's weird. When you're young, you got time and no money, but as you get older, Time becomes so valuable, it's easier just to write a check. It's easier just to give money. Problem is, when you do for everyone, you're writing checks to everyone. (laughs) Don't just write checks. At some point, at some level outside your family, go time. As I say that, listen, I've been at Crosswind 17 years. I know your hearts. I know that if you could, you would be there for every kid without a dad. You would come alongside every struggling family in this church. Personally, you would. You can't do that. But I have a feeling you can do it for one. This is how lives get changed. The commitment to find somebody to go the extra mile with. And this is less exhausting than thinking you've got to do it for everyone. Here's the truth. Sometimes when you do for one, You do for far more than one because that person pays it forward in their own way to someone else. But you never know. Here's what we do know. If you are razor thin, burned out, there is very little good that comes out of that. If you are hiding and not getting too involved meeting somebody's needs, okay, very little good comes out of that. But when you decide, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going deep, not wide, long, not short, time, not just money. Then perhaps 
This is your greatest opportunity to do the most good in our church, around our community. To do what Jesus was talking about. Do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. That's how you change a community. And that might be how you change the world. But for sure, it's how you change someone's world. And I promise you, it's how you change yours. So, do for one. Always find yourself in the process of doing for one. 